Hi there, welcome again to Akin Channel. Today our topic is about English 7, Quarter 1, Module 7. And the title is Using Phrases, Clauses and Sentences Appropriately and Meaningfully. Siyempre, kung bago ka palang sa channel na to, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and also click the notification bell in order to be updated. And of course, please share also. Alright, let us start. The objectives in this uh, lesson are the following. Define phrase, clause, and sentence. Number two is differentiate phrase, clause, and sentence from one another. And the third one is construct sentences using clauses and phrases. By the way, I'd like to remind you that uh, you should have your module habang pinapanood nyo to para nasusundan ninyo at malagyan ninyo ng answer yung mga dapat lagyan. Alright, what is a sentence? Sentence, according to this module, is the largest grammatical unit in the English French scale. And it refers to a group of words that begins with a capital letter and ends with any of these three punctuation marks. The period, or full stop, and then the exclamation mark, and also the question mark. Now, a simple sentence is one which has one main or independent clause. Alright, example, this is my food. This is now an example of a sentence. It has a subject, this, and it has a predicate, is my food. Another one is, where is your friend? This one ends in a question mark, and the first one ends in a period, and the third one ends in an exclamatory mark. Alright. Now, a sentence has two parts. We have the subject, and the predicate. Now, when we say subject, it refers to the part of a sentence that tells who or what the sentence is about. Ano ba yung ginagawa ng subject of sentence? Okay. By the way, I mean, uh, the subject refers to the one who is performing the action in the sentence. <clears throat> Example, Kelly is walking down the street. Alright? Kelly is here is our subject. And is walking down the street is our predicate. Alright. Another example is she looks good. Alright. She is our subject and looks good is our predicate. Alright. Now, in your module, we have here a task one. Instruction in the module is copy each of the following sentences on your activity notebook and then underline the subject and encircle the predicate. Alright. Number one, Anna is cooking spaghetti. Okay, Anna here is our subject and is cooking spaghetti is our predicate. Number two, the children are playing Scrabble. Our subject is children and are playing Scrabble is our predicate. Okay, number three, avocado is my favorite fruit. Our subject is avocado and is my favorite fruit is our predicate. And number four, reading is my hobby. Our subject is reading, and is my hobby is our predicate. All right, number five, my teacher smiles at me. Our subject is here is my teacher, and smiles at me is our predicate. Number six, I am worried now. Our subject here is I, and our predicate is I'm worried now. Number seven, teach me how to drive. Our subject here. By the way, in this uh, example, we need to find the subject. This is an example of uh, a sentence which has an imaginary subject. All right, an imaginary subject here is you. And then our predicate here is teach me how to drive. In other words, this one here, although it does not show the subject, yet it is considered as a simple sentence because it expresses a complete thought. Kahit na hindi pinapakita ang subject ito, it is a, an example of a command. Ito ay utos. So, the subject here is you. And this, is, this you is called imaginary subject. So, our subject is you. And teach me how to drive is our predicate. Number eight. Are you afraid of the dark? Alright, our subject here is you. And our predi uh, predicate is are and afraid of the dark. By the way, this sentence, in order for you to find the subject, you need to rewrite this into a normal order. 
So you need to write this like this. You are afraid of the dark. Of course, our subject now is you and our predicate is are afraid of the dark. So our answer here is correct. Okay, number nine. Daniel looks happy today. All right, our subject is Daniel and looks happy today is our predicate. And number 10, we will attend the meeting this afternoon. All right, our subject here is we and then will attend the meeting this afternoon is our predicate. Okay, task number two, instruction. Copy each of the following sentences on your notebook and then identify whether the group of words is a sentence, a phrase, or a clause. Okay, write your answer on the space provided for. Okay, number one. My grandma's house. All right, this is a phrase. Remember, a phrase is a group of words without a verb, uh, I mean a subject or verb. Although this phrase looks like a subject, yet there is no verb. So this is a phrase. Okay, number two, I love singing and dancing. Okay, this has a subject and a predicate, so this is a sentence. Number three, when the saints go marching in. Okay, we have a subject here and the verb, but it does not show a complete thought. So this is called a clause. What kind of clause is this? This is called dependent or subordinate clause. Magkakaroon lang siya ng kahulugan kapag ito ay idinugdong mo sa isang independent clause or simple sentence. Okay, number four. We were discussing modules on the table. Okay, we have here subject and we have predicates. So this is a sentence. Number five. Living behind the dog. All right. Here we have a verb, but we have no subject. So this is a phrase. Number six. Smashing into a fence. All right. We have here a verb, but we have no subject. So this is a phrase. Number seven, she wanted to talk to my sister. All right, we have here a subject, and we have also a predicate. Wanted to talk to my sister. All right, so this is a sentence. Number eight, when she got home. All right, we have here a subject, and we have also a verb, but it does not show a complete thought. When she got home. So, so what? When she got home, hindi naman sinabi kung ano nangyari. So, it does not make sense. It that does not show a complete thought. So in order for this uh, group of words to have a meaning, it needs to be added into a simple sentence. So this is called clause. What kind of clause? This is called subordinate or dependent clause. In Filipino, this is called sugnay na di nakapag isa. All right, number nine, my sister got fainted. All right, in this... Uh, Group of words, we have a subject sister, and we have also predicate, got fainted. So this is a sentence. Number 10, in the school, all right, this group of words has no subject, and also it has no uh, verb. So this is considered as a phrase. Okay, number task three, copy the following on your activity notebook. Okay, underline the group of words, if it is a sentence, and then circle if it is a phrase. Okay. John hit. All right. This is somewhat uh, confusing because it is, it is composed of two words. Now, this sentence looks like in the past tense. Hit. Because if this is in the present tense, dapat may is dito. Since walang s, then we can consider this as a past tense. So, John hit is a sentence. Okay. Sam and Sherry went to class. Okay. We have a subject, Sam and Sherry, and we have also predicate, went to class. So, this is a sentence. Well, this one, go to the movies. There is no subject, although we have uh, a verb. Yet, if we are going to analyze carefully, this is an example of a sentence with an imaginary subject. And because this is an example of a command, ito ay utos. So, when we say, go to the movies, it means that the person who is uh, told to go to the movies is you. So, actually it is, you go to the movies. So, this is 
a sentence. All right. Number four, the animals live in the forest. Okay, we have a subject and we have predicate live in the forest. So this is a sentence. Now, for this uh, part of the movies, it's go with, it's like this. The subject here is you. Okay, this is called imaginary subject. That's why this is considered as a sentence. Okay, this is imaginary subject. All right. Number four, the animals live in the forest. Okay, this is also a sentence. Number five, happy day. There is no subject and there is no verb in this uh, group of words. So this is not a sentence. But actually, this is only a phrase. Okay, jump for joy. This is also a sentence because this, uh, this is an, also an example of a sentence with an imaginary subject like this one. You jump for joy. So this is a sentence. Now the showkeeper showed the animal. We have here subject, showkeeper, and we have also predicate, show the animal. So this is a sentence. All day, we have no subject, we have no verb, so this is only a phrase. Okay. I played basketball today. Okay, we have a subject and we have also a predicate played basketball today. So this is a sentence. I also enjoy playing baseball. We have a subject, we have also predicate, also enjoy playing basket baseball, so this is a sentence. All right. Now, task number four. Copy the following sentences on your activity notebook and then write yes if the underlined word in this sentence is a phrase and then no if it is not. Okay, number one. He was waiting for the rain stop, uh, rain to stop. All right, our underlined word is was waiting. Was waiting is only composed of two words, a verb and its object waiting. So this is not, uh, I mean, this is uh, not a sentence. This is only a phrase. Okay, so this is only a phrase. Okay, the answer here is yes. Remember, a phrase is a gro is group of words without a subject. Although it has a verb, like this one, was waiting my verb siya, pero wala naman siya siyang subject, so it is only a phrase. So, our instruction here, write yes if the underlined word is in, in its sentence, is a phrase. Okay, this is a phrase. Okay. Number two, she was upset when it didn't boil. Okay, the answer is no. This is not a phrase because it has a subject. It and it has also a verb. Didn't boil. So this is not a phrase, but this is not also a sentence. Rather, this is only a clause. Okay. Now, by the way, what kind of clause is this? This is called dependent or subordinate clause. Okay. Para makaroon siya ng kahulugan, kailangan idugtong siya dito sa independent clause. She was upset. Okay, number three, the answer is no. You have been sleeping. This is actually considered as a simple sentence because we have a subject and we have a verb. Okay, number four, you might enjoy a massage. Enjoy a massage is also a phrase. All right, it has a subject. I mean, it has a verb and it has a complement or object, but it has no subject, so it is only considered as a phrase. Okay, number five, this is also a phrase. What kind of phrase? This is called prepositional phrase. Kasi nag siya sa preposition na to. Itong isa, ang tawag dito ay verb phrase kasi nag siya sa verb na enjoy. Okay, number six, ivory is diligent. This is also not a verb phrase. Kasi ivory is diligent is already considered as a simple sentence because it has a subject and it has a predicate, is diligent. Itong in her studies, ito ang ating tinatawag na phrase. What kind of phrase? This is called prepositional phrase. Okay. 
Katulad din ito, to eat dinner. Ito ay isa ring prepositional phrase. Number seven, El Elvis always ask me a food. Okay. This is also a phrase. What kind of phrase? This is since it starts with a verb, ask. And then uh, it uh, follows with, is followed with, with uh, a complement or a direct object. Me is the object of the verb as. So this is called verb phrase. Okay, number eight. They want me to go with them. With them. All right. They want me is, our, is a simple sentence. So this is not a phrase. Ang phrase dito ay itong to go. This is called prepositional phrase. And another one is with them. Ang with them is also considered as prepositional phrase. Itong mga, pre, itong mga uh, phrases na ito ay ginagamit lang para may karoon ng kaliwanagan itong unang part, yung they want me. It is, it is only added in order to give a complete thought to this uh, uh, sentence. All right. Number nine. Maxin is a nice pit. A nice pit is also a phrase. What kind of phrase? Okay. This is called adjective phrase because here, a and nice are uh, adjectives that modifies the noun pit. All right. Number 10. Are you done? This is not also a phrase because it is already considered as a simple sentence. Okay. Now, phrase, what actually is a phrase? A phrase is considered as words that can be grouped together but without a subject or a verb. A phrase is a group of words related to the subject, predicate, or object. And then phrases do not contain a subject. Wala siyang subject, wala ring predicate. Kasi kung meron siyang subject or predicate, we would call them a clause. Okay. But remember, a close, how clauses, close are. Uh, we have two kinds of clauses. We have uh, the independent clause and we have dependent clause. Okay. Pag sinabi natin independent clause, yun yung tinatawag nating sugnay na nakapag-iisa. Yan yung independent clause. But the other one, yung dependent or subordinate clause, that is called sugnay na di nakapag-iisa. Alright. Phrases provide additional information about subjects, predicates, and objects. And understanding how they work is helpful in building and analyzing a sentence. Alright. Example. After working late into the night, Jack fell asleep on his desk. Alright. Here. Okay, let us analyze this carefully. Itong after working late into the night, ito ang ating uh, phrase. If we are going to uh, analyze this carefully, it looks like it is a subordinate clause. Para siyang subordinate clause. Kasi mahaba siya at saka merong comma rito. But if we are going to analyze this carefully, hindi siya uh, subordinate clause kasi wala siyang subject. Pag sinabi natin sa board and close, meron siyang subject, meron siyang predicate. Dito, meron lang siyang predicate, pero wala siyang subject. So this is not uh, considered as a subordinate clause. Rather, this is only a phrase. Phrase lang siya na binubuo ng how many words? One, two, three, four, five, six words. Yet, this is only considered as a phrase. What kind of phrase? nag sa after. Ang after, if we're going to look this up in the dictionary, is actually a preposition. So this whole group of words is acting as a prepositional phrase. And another uh, another thing is that this whole group of words also is acting as an adjective because it modifies the noun jack. It describes jack. Okay, after working late at night, that is, that is a description of jack. Then jack fell asleep on his desk. Okay. Next, 
I left my cage inside the Whole Foods and then comma my favorite grocery store. All right, here. This phrase, my favorite grocery store, is acting as an appositive. It describes the previous word, whole foods. Remember, when I say a positive phrase, it is a phrase that describes the previous noun or pronoun. Okay, now here, the previous word here is whole foods. And the description given in this sentence is my favorite grocery store. So my favorite grocery store is a kind of phrase. What kind of phrase? It is called a positive phrase. Okay. Now, note that a phrase can come at the beginning, pwede siya sa umpisa sa unahan ng sentence, pwede rin sa gitna, at pwede rin sa hulihan ng sentence. Example, after dinner, pwede ito sa unahan, pwede rin sa hulihan. And then waiting for the rain to stop, pwede rin ito sa unahan, pwede sa gitna, pwede rin sa hulihan ng sentence. Okay. On the other hand, the clause are a group of words that have both subjects and predicates. Pag sinabi natin clause, meron siyang subject, meron din siyang predicate. Unlike phrases, a clause can sometimes act as a sentence. Ang clause ay nagiging sentence, and this type of clause is called an independent clause. In Filipino, pag sinabi natin independent clause, ito ay tinatawag na sugnay na nakapag-iisa. It can stand alone. Okay. An example of a subordinate clause is when the man broke into the house. Itong when the man broke into the house is an example of subordinate clause. If we are going to analyze this closely, meron siyang subject, meron din siyang verb, pero it cannot stand alone. Kasi, pakaganito lang, when the man broke into the house. So what? What happened? It does not uh, mean anything. Wala siyang complete thought. So we cannot consider this as a sentence. Rather, this is only a clause. What kind of clause? It is called subordinate or dependent clause. Kaya tinawag natin siyang subordinate or dependent clause. Kasi dumidepende lang siya sa independent clause. Kapag walang independent clause, wala siyang meaning. Kailangan mo siyang idugtong sa independent clause para magkaroon siya ng kahulugan. Alright. An example of an independent clause is the dog bark at him. Okay. Ito, meron siyang subject, meron din siyang predicate. Uh, so, we can consider this as a simple sentence. At the same time, we can also consider this as an independent clause. Okay. Kasi kapag pinagdugtong natin ito at saka itong isa, it becomes like this. When the man broke into the house, the dog bark at him. Kapag tinanggal natin itong partner ito, when the man broke into the house, buo pa rin ito, the dog bark at him, kompleto pa rin siya. So, this part of the sentence, the dog bark at him, is called independent clause or sugnay na nakapag-iisa. Kasi kahit tanggalin natin ito, buo pa rin ang sense dito, buo pa rin ang thought. Unlike this one, kapag tinanggal natin itong the dog bark at him, wala nang meaning ito, ha? Huh? When the man broke into the house, it does not mean anything. It does not make sense. So, in order for this to have a perfect sense, it needs to be added to the independent clause. Kailang idugtong mo siya dito para ito ay magkaroon ng kahulugan. Alright. This is our dependent or subordinate clause. While this one is our independent clause. Remember, when we say dependent clause, Dependent or subordinate clause. It is a clause that cannot stand alone. That's why in Filipino, this is called sugnay na di nakapag-iisa. Hindi niya kayang tumayong mag-isa. Kailangan idultong mo siya sa independent clause para magkaroon siya ng kahulugan. While here, independent clause is a clause that can stand alone. In Filipino, it is, ito tawag dito ay sugnay na nakapag-iisa. Alright. Here's another activity. Let us just proceed to uh, the instruction here. Come to the table below and write your answer in your notebook. Classified and underlined words above whether they have a complete or incomplete thought. May answer na rito sa inyong module. So let us just uh, give the explanation here. I am leaving today kaya ito naging complete thought. Kasi meron siyang subject, I, 
at meron dyan siyang uh, predicate, uh, I'm living today. So, meron siyang complete thought. Well, this one, I want to be a part of it. Kaya siya complete thought. Kasi meron siyang subject, meron din siyang predicate. Also, this one, meron siyang, di siyang, meron din siyang subject, it, and then, it's up to you ang kanyang uh, predicate. So, complete thought siya. Unlike this part, this vagabond shoes, wala siyang complete thought. Kasi although mukha siyang may subject, wala naman siyang verb at predicate. Okay. In old New York, wala rin siyang subject, wala rin siyang uh, verb. So, it does not express a complete thought. Well, this one, if I can make it there, wala naman siyang sinabi kung ano mangyayari. If I can make it there, so what? What will happen? It does not uh, say anything. So, this, this group of words does not show a complete thought. Ang tawag dito, ay uh, dependent or subordinate clause. Ang tawag naman dito ay phrase. What kind of phrase? This is called prepositional phrase. Dito naman, this bag of shoes, this is also a phrase. What kind of phrase? This is called, this could be either uh, adjective uh, phrase or noun phrase. It depends. Depende ito kung paano gagamitin sa sentence. Okay. Now, how to find the difference among phrase, clause, and sentence? Okay. Here is an example. I'm going to buy a cell phone. This is not uh, included in your module, but I use this example para maging mas malinaw pa sa inyo ang kahulugan kasi hindi masyadong naipaliwanag sa module ito. Okay. Ang subject natin dito ay itong I. And, okay, this is our subject. Uh, I'm going to buy a cell phone is our predicate. Alright. Now, this is considered as a sentence. What kind of sentence? This is called simple sentence. Kasi wala naman kasugtong siya dito na subordinate clause. So, this is a sentence. Okay. Now, to expand this, dadagan natin dito ng in the mall. Okay. Itong in the mall ngayon, ito ngayon ang ating phrase. Okay. Dinudung natin siya dito sa ulihan. Now, Pagka ito ay dinugtungan pa natin, I am going to buy a cell phone in the mall if I have money. Itong if I have money, ito ngayon ang ating dependent or subordinate clause. And then the first part, itong I am going to buy a cell phone in the mall, ito na ngayon ang ating main or the independent clause. Kaya natin sinasabing main ito siya. Kasi mayroon ng karugtong na dependent or subordinate clause. Kapag wala ito, pwede na natin sabihin ito na sentence lang ito. Wala ng main. Nagkakaroon lang siya ng uh, sinasabing main kapag may karugtong na dependent or subordinate clause. Now, this is our main or independent clause. And then, itong in the mall dito, ito ngayon ang ating phrase. In other words, itong mga phrase ay pwedeng pandugtong lang ito para lang madagdagan, magkaroon ng uh, malinaw na kahulugan ang sentence, kaya natin ginagamit ang phrase. Okay. Kapag dinagdagan naman natin ito, like this one, at the end of this week, itong at the end of this week, ito ngayon ang ating their phrase. Alright. I hope you have learned something in this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you again.